or on the ground. Um, so, you know, mid-level to, to low is where I would be looking for, for this bird. Um, worm eating warbler, uh, same, same thing, usually about mid canopy. And that book that I um, referred er earlier, uh, the warbler guide, that'll kind of let you know what part of the tree uh, these birds can be found in. So some like the cerulean warbler, black burning warbler like to be real high in the in the tree. I think Cape Mays as well. And then some like to be mid mid level and then some like to be um, either on the ground or really low level. Um, and that and that book can, you know, uh, can show you where you'll be able to find those those birds uh, in, in relation to the, those different levels. So uh, let's go to other species that that don't change. Um, you've got the Canada warbler, nice mature male. So, you know, it's, it's really hard to confuse that bird with anything else, even all those yellow warblers that are out there. Uh, Canada warbler, the immature female, you know, you could confuse that maybe with a Connecticut warbler, a Nashville warbler. Um, but there's little things that you can, you can do, uh, one being studying <laughs> and uh, really looking at pictures of them. Um, and that warbler guy is gonna, gonna uh, show you all the similar uh, species and it's gonna show you all these minute details that can help you identify those birds. But if you don't know, don't worry about it. It's okay if you can grab a picture, send it to me or send it to somebody else that, that knows their birds and, and we'll try to figure it out for you. Um, the black throated blue, uh, warbler, the female. Uh, now a mature one is going to have this nice little handkerchief uh, patch right here. And you can also see that that beautiful little white uh, eyebrow, all right, the supercilium right here. Um, some of those immature females are going to lack that. So if you see a kind of a drab bird, no streaking, but it has this right here, you, you probably have a, an immature uh, female black throated blue. Now the black throated blue males, that's how they look all the time. Um, again, you can't really uh, mistake that bird for, for anything else. Um, but great birds and they'll be passing through here. Um, I think somebody on the chat whenever we first started this uh, webinar uh, said that they had a Canada warbler at the South Carolina Botanical Garden um, already. So a uh, great bird, if you've never seen it, go, go, go up there and, and find it. it they're, uh, they're spectacular. Uh, let's see. Oh, and that's another one um, mid to low canopy um, or in the shrubs. Um, these two, I never see them in the springtime uh, where I live, but I always see them in the fall time. So remember, we were talking about um, the differences in between um, spring migration and fall migration. Some have different routes. Uh, and for me, um, unless I just get terribly unlucky in the springtime. I never see these birds in the spring, but again, always, always, always seeing, see them in really, really nice numbers in the fall time. So you can see the, the beautiful male here, and I wish I would be able to see these, uh, or I wish I had these in, in shape and in the, in the springtime because they're stunning. Um, but this is what I get to look at. And, you know, listen, they're, they're pretty. Um, you know, if I'm being honest, I want to see this one, though. <laughs> so this is what I get to find. But you can see how it's nice, vibrant yellow, nice, bright yellow with some streaking right there. It does have, you know, a little bit of uh, kind of a greenish yellow on the back. It's got, a, got some wing bars, beautiful, beautiful eye ring right here. Um, but then you look at the chestnut sided warbler, and this is the springtime plumage, and this, this is the fall plumage. It has this weird, like, kind of limey green, yellowish, uh, you know, coloration on on the head and then down its back. And even the wing bars right here um, can can even have that same color. You know, they they have white in them. You know, but it's almost like somebody just barely washed it with a little bit of yellow. Uh, so really, really neat bird. You know, it, it took me probably a day to figure out what it was about five or six years ago whenever I saw it for the first time. But uh, with this book, I was able to do it. Um, and when I did, I was super, super excited um, that, I, that I had my first chestnut sided warbler. Uh, so if you're in the Midlands, uh, you can find that bird bird this uh, this fall if you've never seen one before. And hopefully you'll you'll find one in the uh, in the springtime as well, because you, you can see how how beautiful they are then. Um, so these are these are pretty high in the in the canopy. So you have the black Bernian warbler, and I think I told y'all at the beginning. You know, we I had a buddy of mine in Chapin. Uh, well, he lives in Lexington, came to Chapin yesterday, and and found a black Bernian warbler um, at Crooked Creek Park here, um, where the rec center is. 
Uh, so it doesn't have to be a national forest or anything like that, you know, a thousand acres. It can be, you know, a, a little rec center park um, with, with nice native trees. Um, and so, you know, they can, they can be uh, varied. You, you see how muted this, uh, the coloration of this one is. Um, it might be, you know, um, a female, uh, probably maybe a first year female. Uh, doesn't have too much color on it. Um, and then you see the wing bars right here, pretty prominent wing bars. Um, and, it, you know, the, the males are even going to have wing bars in the fall time, or they should. Um, but uh, in the in the springtime, they're going to have some uh, paneling. It's going to look, you know, kind of more like a, a white blob. Um, so in the fall time, they, they typically have these two wing bars right here. This, you see this triangle, and that's pretty diagnostic. And you see this really, really prominent eyebrow right here. Even the, even the I'm assuming, again, this is, this is a female, but even the female, you know, has that nice eyebrow. You then look at the Cape May, when you look at these two, you know, you think they're kind of similar, but let's, let's look at the differences. You know, very, if, if at all, you know, very limited eyebrow. Um, I would say it, it doesn't even exist on that one. You can, you can see that it definitely doesn't exist on that one, but it does have an eye line, right? So it does have this eye line and look how much more streaking this bird has. You know, this bird has some, no doubt about it, but it kind of stops right here. But this, this bird streaking, you know, kind of goes all the way up to the throat. Now they're not all going to be that perfect, right? Um, but really, really yellow bird. Um, it doesn't really have um, much of a wing patch. Um, now they, they can in the springtime. Um, so it might have, you know, kind of a remaining wing patch or, you know, nothing, nothing at all. So if you see two white, you know, really uh, bright wing bars, you know, it's, it's not gonna be a Cape May warbler or shouldn't be. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to figure out anything else I need to say about those. But again, high, usually high in the canopy, not to say that you won't find them mid canopy or maybe even on the ground one day, especially if you have that sprinkler going and you got you know, a pool on the ground or something, you might find, find one in there. Um, so let's look at these you know, very similar birds um, one more time. So we didn't talk about a pine warbler yet. You know, A lot of people in South Carolina, we all have pine trees almost. Um, so we, we typically have our pine warblers and, and know what they look like. But in the fall time, <laughs> they can, that everything changes, right? Because <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of birds that look like pine warblers. So two wing bars, right? So you have the black burning right here. And then you have the <clears throat> bay breasted warbler right here. Those wing bars are usually going to be a little bit brighter white. Remember the Cape, Cape May warblers, uh, it, it shouldn't have wing bars. All right. Um, and let's see, I always say it has kind of a dirty appearance, the, the, pine, the pine warbler uh, does. Um, and, you know, if you see when it says unstreaked back, you can see that there's no, there's no um, streaking right there, but you see it on the black burning, see those little streaks right there? And then you see it on the bay breasted warbler right there. So if you see wing bars and you see back streaking, and remember, you know, this is all assuming that it just perches right there and it stays still and you're like, oh, <laughs> that bird has back, back streaking. A lot of times it doesn't happen. So again, you're not going to be able to identify all of these birds because they're not going to sit in front of you for, you know, a minute, you know, five feet away. Um, and that's okay. Uh, let's go over to the black burning warbler. You know, you, you see this little triangle, right? And you could say, hey, that female uh, pine warbler looks like it has a little triangle too, right? But look at that eyebrow. It really doesn't have one. It's got an eye line, but look at that black Bernian uh, warbler's eyebrow, okay? And remember, those females are going to have it too. This looks like a, looks like a fall male right here. Um, but look at that nice eyebrow. Uh, this pine warbler is not going to see that. So if you see something like that, um, it's probably not going to be a, a, a pine warbler, okay? Um, and that eyebrow is, is uh, more significant on that black burning warbler than any of these species right here. So you've got a really nice eyebrow and that uh, triangle patch right there, two wing bars or a wing patch, um, you know, you've got yourself a black burning warbler, spectacular bird. And I hope you get to see one in the springtime because they'll, they'll blow your mind. Uh, Cape May, really, really, really big time streaking, okay? Uh, a lot of times, a lot of yellow. Um, you know, if not a lot of yellow, a nice yellow wash, um, but you'll, you'll always have that or almost always, I hate, I shouldn't use that word always, but almost always have that, that significant streaking right there. Um, and then the bay breasted warbler, you know, a large warbler, kind of sluggish, um, kind of slow when it, when it, when it forges way opposite of the American red start, that's really hyper and, and jumping all over the place. 
um, has that greenish head. Uh, it's got the wing bars, all right? And it doesn't have any streaking though, right here. So if you, if, so if you see a yellow bird, heavy streaking, doesn't really have a, a, any wing bars, you probably have a Cape May. But if you have a, a decent size warbler, got a couple wing bars, no streaking, and a lot of them are gonna have this kind of chestnut color right here. Um, you, you've probably got yourself a bay-breasted warbler. And remember, if you're unsure and you've got a photograph, you know, let, let me know uh, or send it my way. And so, you know, this is a little curveball, y'all. So you've got a bird, it's got two wing bars, all right? It's got some streaking up here. You know, it's got this nice, nice eye line, maybe some faint, faint streaking right there. You know, and y'all don't have to put this in the chat or anything unless you want to. But what, what do you think you have right here? And um, we'll just go, I'll let y'all think about it for a second. And so you have a black pole warbler. And, uh, you know, we don't get too many of these in the fall time. We get quite a few in the springtime when they look like this. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous birds. Uh, really, really neat birds. The, the song is, is really high pitched. It almost sounds like an insect. Um, and I'm not going to get into that right now. But uh, they, a lot of these, a lot of the population just flies right from the Northeast, you know, over the ocean down into the Caribbean. So a lot of times we don't even get to see them because they're over the ocean. Um, but um, I've had friends, you know, see, see them in the fall time um, and they're, they're pretty tough to identify. But again, look at this. So you, you see the streaking, just a, a little bit of streaking on the, on the flanks. You definitely have it on the back. And then you have this really, really, really nice eye line. And when we go back to the, those other birds, you know, for the bay breasted warbler, no, no real streaking at all, no eye line, even though it does have the wing bars and this, but again, remember no eye line and no streaking. Um, you know, the black Bernie and warbler, I don't think you can really confuse that with the, uh, um, the black pole because of, you know, this, this face right here. Uh, I could see a pine warbler being confused because um, it does sometimes have some, have some streaking. Um, but it, remember, it doesn't have the, the streaking on the back. So it has streaking on the, on the maybe the flanks, the sides, and, and some of the, the belly, but not the back, okay? So I know that's, you know, that, that's still tough, but it, it, just, it just takes practice, and you'll, you'll be able to identify those, um, you know, given, given enough time and, and practice and studying, okay? So a few more of our gorgeous warblers. This is one that I, it seems like the last couple of years, once I turn that uh, sprinkler on, I, I get my Tennessee warblers. And that's uh, basically the only time that I, that I see them is in the fall time when I have my sprinkler on. Uh, but I love seeing them. Um, you know, they're, they're not the brightest warblers out there, uh, but, but really, really neat, neat birds to, to have on your property. So mid cam canopy to shrubs, so relatively low. Um, every, every fall, it seems like people get some Nashville warblers, but you know, one of my favorite, uh, um, characteristics of this bird is that gorgeous, gorgeous white eye line. So really, really neat bird, uh, usually pretty low. Um, and if you, even if you read about them, they'll, they'll talk about the clear cuts or shrubby, uh, power lines next to, uh, forests. So they like those, those edges. Um, especially around areas like this. So, you know, focus on those areas and you'll, you'll give yourself a better chance of finding those birds that maybe you haven't seen before. And then the palm warbler, you know, will be showing up, um, you know, for about a month or two, uh, at least here in the Midlands. Um, and that one wags its tail. Um, you know, almost every single time I, I see a palm warbler, it's, it's pumping its tail. And uh, there should be a song about that, and maybe I'll get writing. But um, yeah, that that bird is always pumping its tail. Think about an Eastern Phoebe, how it pumps its tail. Um, and you know, there's a handful of other birds, but uh, you'll see this one on gravel roads a lot. You'll see it in farm fields. You know, it, it's on the ground uh, a lot. Uh, really, really neat bird to to see. And you can tell, you know, the difference between that bird and and these. You can see that beautiful, beautiful. Um, uh, eyebrow, it's got some coloration on its head, dark coloration that the Tennessee warbler does, doesn't have, even though it, the Tennessee does have that little eyebrow. Um, so pretty, pretty different. Um, this is going to have a lot of yellow under the tail, uh, where you can see that one has white, but those are all small details that you, you, you'll pick up whenever you, uh, whenever you study these birds and, and get some experience. Um, a neat caterpillar that I love having at my house, and it's and it's here right now. This is from last year or the year before. Is a viceroy caterpillar. It uh, it mimics a, a bird dropping. Um, so you know, 
uh, safety by mimicking being a bird dropping. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool, huh? Uh, so I'm a warbler, you know, fanatic. So just a, just a couple more here. So hang hang tight. Um, hooded warblers, and then we have Wilson's warbler. You know, I, I told you before, I've never seen a Wilson's. So it'll be a great, great time when I do. <laughs> um, so maybe, maybe this fall will be, will be my time. Um, but hoodeds are, are a little bit larger than a Wilson's warbler. You know, when I think of videos that I've seen of this bird, the Wilson's, you know, I think of a, a really chunky yellow blue gray gnat catcher uh, because those blue gray gnat catchers uh, have this really kind of weirdly long and skinny tail. And that's what, that's what this bird has here. Uh, which the um, hooded warbler really, really doesn't have. So hooded could look like, I, I think it looks like flying moss, like the color of my shirt almost. And you can, and you can see that here. So, you know, sometimes when I see them and I only see the, the back, they, they, they're this dark, beautiful dark green. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to be a lot darker than that Wilson's warbler right there um, in terms of, of this coloration uh, on, the, on the wings and on the back, okay? Um, again, larger, shorter tail, that's an adult male. Um, this is either a female or immature. You can see here that the Wilson's warbler has this really nice eyebrow and it kind of connects back here. You see that this is more, you know, it's got this nice uh, cheek patch right here. The lowers, the area in front of the eye can be dark. You can see the, how dark it is right here, but this one's pretty dark. Um, you know, I can see that that's dark too but you know, this one lacks that. So just, just little details um, that, that can help you figure out which one you're looking at. But larger bird, a little bit darker, um, and uh, good luck. I hope y'all get to see one this year. So I don't know, I was thinking about asking BB to like to say three thrushes three times in three seconds, but I don't think I'm going to um, ask her to do that, but, that but you know, y'all can, huh? <laughs> what? That would be embarrassing because I will get you're not, gonna, you're not gonna do it. We'll do it. We'll do it next staff meeting next week. Um, but look at these thrush uh, or thrushes. Uh, and and we get that we get all three coming through the Midlands. Um, and y'all shouldn't be any different down in down in the coast or or in the in the mountains. I'll have to double check with the map, but um, I'm pretty sure you know they cover the whole state. Um, but the wood thrush is gonna be the largest one. Um, and I always say a little, a little joke, it, you know, it looks like my mom got a hold of it and, and just bleached its, its breast, real, real bright white. And then, you know, let's say my son came in with a marker, a brown marker and just dotted it. So real crisp, bright white breast, and then this nice coloration. Um, this, this picture doesn't really uh, get, do, give, give any credit, but it's got this beautiful bright white eye ring as well. Um, and so, and, oh, it's got this just beautiful, warm cinnamon, you know, coloration on its back. Uh, so it's, it's larger than, than these other two, you know, it's, it's brighter, you know, more contrasting between the colors, uh, in my opinion, than these other two birds. Um, so let's skip over the gray cheek thrush and they're not making sounds. They, they, they might make some, some chips and, and some calls, but they're not singing um, this, this time of year, or at least I've, I've, I've never heard them sing in the last five or six years in the fall time. They're not breeding, right? Uh, so let's look at this one, a Swainson's thrush. It has, you know, they call them spectacles, but it, it has a little bit of white um, and it's kind of buffy, right? And that just means it's kind of brown, kind of creamy brown, and it kind of goes around its eye, all right? And so you've got that where the wood or the wood thrush doesn't. And then you've got this kind of, you see how it, it's a little bit dirty. It looks like it was white at one time. And then somebody came with like some cocoa powder or something and just like, like blew it on there. So, and that, and that really helps with identif identification. Um, you can see the brown isn't the same as the brown as the wood thrush. Uh, it's not as warm um, is the word I'll use. And then the and then the spotting just kind of starts you know fading away, whereas the the wood thrush you know kind of has significant spotting throughout. Uh, but you can see how it how it starts fading away right here. Um, and then the gray cheek thrush, well, it's it's gray. You know, you know uh, I mean, sometimes they can look brown, I guess. But once you see one, you're, you're gonna you're gonna 
you know, say to yourself probably, ah, that really is gray. <laughs> um, and so nice, nice gray right here. No, no eye ring to really speak of. All right. So remember, you usually have a really nice black, uh, I'm sorry, uh, white eye ring right here around that black eye. And here you have kind of a, a buffy eye ring, not, not quite bleach white like this one. And then you've got these spectacles, all right? So this one doesn't have it. So real, real um, non-contrasty face, just kind of one, one color um, and, and just grayer. So a real treat is going out in, into some woods near your neighborhood um, or maybe in your own backyard and finding all three uh, one, one afternoon or one morning um, uh, and, and I don't know. I don't know why that does it for me, but I just like finding three thrushes in, in one bird outing. It's really neat. Uh, other birds that aren't tanagers, or uh, I'm sorry, that aren't, uh, that aren't warblers. Uh, so we've got some uh, blue grosbeak here and then the indigo blue, uh, bunting. You know how the males look during the um, springtime, just amazing, amazing coloration, the, the deep blues. You know, in the fall time, they, they exchange that for more subdued uh, colors, you know, brown. So you'll see some dirty ones here, um, <clears throat> like this, like that. Um, and then you'll probably, you know, this might be a female right here or a, a maybe a young uh, and immature, you know, fall male. Um, but blue grosbeaks have this real nice cinnamon, you know, deep coloration. Um, and they fidget a lot too. Uh, again, remember Kramer, right? Um, so American red starts, Blue grosbeaks, they kind of move uh, similarly. Um, the blue grosbeak is going to just be in different habitats. So that'll be around fields, uh, but so will the indigo bunting. So if you have a, a bird that's just real um, frantic um, with its movements, kind of jerks around like a, a lot, like a song sparrow would, if, you, if you've ever seen one of those, you know, you probably have a blue grosbeak. Plus, it chips a lot. Um, it makes that chip call and it's, it's really unique. And so if you study that, go to allaboutbirds.org or Merlin Bird um, app, uh, you can practice that chip, chip song, or I'm sorry, not the song, but a chip call. And it's really unique and it'll point you towards uh, those birds in the, in the fall time. Um, so indigo bunnings, uh, the smaller uh, overall bill right here, and it's just smaller general size. Um, but just, you know, that's, that's a practice one and, and just, just go out and, and the more practice that you have, the, the, the better you'll be at identifying those. And so we're almost done here. We've got only a, a few more minutes left, but uh, be on the lookout for these great birds. Um, you know, you're, you're probably gonna see a lot of these. Um, so females and immature this time of year. Um, I, I really don't know. I, I want to say the mature males keep their plumage, but I just don't see them in the fall time. I could be wrong, um, but you'll probably see, if you don't see this one, you'll probably see, uh, you know, a lot of immature males that look like this. They're, they're basically dirty versions of a nice mature male. Um, but this is what I usually see in the fall time. Uh, might see one or two of these, and I, I, I see both of these in the springtime. So uh, maybe you'll be lucky to, to have one of those come through the uh, nice mature male in the uh, fall time too. But, um, you know, they, they look a lot like if you've ever seen a purple finch, a female on your feeder, um, they look really, really similar to, to them. Um, but they shouldn't be in, on your property, at least here in South Carolina at the same time of year, probably gonna be pretty rare. But great, great bird and, and one that's gonna be pushing through pretty soon. Um, just a little bit more about what we do. Um, I just love this quote, y'all. So if you just bear with me, um, it's in the end, we'll conserve only what we love. We'll love only what we understand and we will only understand what we are taught. Um, and that's by the, that conservationist. He's a, he's a forester, Baba Diem, um, from Senegal, but, uh, you know, we, we can't, we can't do these educational, um, uh, events or days, um, programs with, without support since we are nonprofits. So, so if y'all have some money set aside for nonprofits, uh, please consider, consider us. Um, we have just big mission to, to open up everybody's eyes up to what we have here, not only in South Carolina, but what we have in the world and hopefully they'll fall in love with it. And like Baba says, um, if you fall in love with it, you're going to take care of it. Right. So think about your, your kids. Um, you know, uh, probably most of y'all love them and you really want to take care of them. But, but what about loving the birds? What about loving the snakes, the insects? Um, get to know them, you know? And so we fall in love with that and then we take care of that. Um, but we also do litter cleanups. We got one on December 4th coming up. 
um, at Archer's Lake uh, to get that pond, which is a big time place for waterfowl in the winter, uh, cleaned up. So those waterfowl have, to have a better uh, chance of survival in that pond um, and, and a cleaner pond. Um, nature presentations, uh, we don't do too many in person anymore, uh, but hopefully we'll get back into it. Um, but we do them uh, just like we're, we're doing right now uh, through the internet. Um, and then, you know, putting up bird boxes, we've, we've uh, distributed wood duck boxes, screech owl boxes, um, installed a bunch of pathonotary warbler boxes over the last two years. Like, look at that number, 370. And that's with DNR, U.S. Forestry, South Carolina Forestry, private landowners, uh, parks. I mean, just so many people are getting to know about this bird because of this project. Um, and these those bird boxes are being used and it's really cool. So uh, that's a little bit about what we do. Um, we do have a lot more uh, YouTube uh, classes that are that are out there or classes that are on our YouTube channel. And if you want to learn how to change your yard that might look like this, I'm not saying it does, but it might look like this to something that looks like this. OK, it takes a little while and a little bit of work, but you can do it. Um, Eric Sheely, uh, one of the horticulture from the um, Botanical Garden at Riverbank Zoo um, has a class from abyss, abyss to Abundance on our YouTube uh, channel. But we've got classes on insects, we've got them on oysters, all, all sorts of stuff. So hopefully there's something there. Um, and I'll hang out for a little bit. That's the last slide and answer any questions that y'all might have. But we are at a few minutes until one. Does anybody have any questions? Anything I can help them with? I didn't see any other questions, but if you still, if anyone still has questions, let me know. And I, I wanted to say thank you for the um, binocular information. That's great. I got that stuff out of there. Um, I, I was going to ask what the biggest challenge was to my, to, to migratory birds or to birds that are coming through the area right now. What, what do you think the biggest challenge would be? Uh, well, I guess finding them first, you know, um, if, if you can't find them, you know, you're not going to be able to identify them. So, um, you know, use eBird um, and find where those really nice parks um, are around you. I mean, there's, they're everywhere, y'all. So it doesn't matter if you live around the coast, um, the Midlands or the upper state or any place in between, you can find a great place to bird, um, even in, in your own, uh, on your own property, as long as you have some some you know oak trees maybe some uh, a native maple or some hickories you know those are going to really pump out some caterpillars and some other native insects and that's that's what these birds need not you know uh, Douglas Ptolemy has done all sorts of research but um you know there's there's something going around and it's been going around for a long time this statistics 97 percent 96 or 97 percent of our terrestrial birds you know non non-ocean birds um, eat insects. Okay. So <laughs> that's a lot. Um, and so you need insects. If you want to see these birds, you need to find the insects. So uh, finding them, you'll find the birds. So just, just remember that. So think about this picture right here, which do you think has more insects? Um, and I know y'all know the answer. So, you know, why, why do most of our yards look like this? So, you know, do something like this, get the insects and you'll, you'll get the birds. Um, again, my wife would say it's a J guarantee, but I am going to guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, and Daniel asked if uh, the Wildlife Federation is hiring biologists. We do have a biologist on staff. Um, and let's see, I think we had one question about how common the white-headed cardinal is. White-headed cardinal? Uh, probably not that common because I've never seen one or heard of one before. I've heard of a, a yellow cardinal, you know, that 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 comes out more often than, than a white-headed one, at least, you know, from, from what I've heard. But um, yeah, I always hear it seems like once a year or so somebody finds a yellow cardinal and it, and it makes the national news, but I, I haven't heard of a white-headed cardinal. If you, if you have seen one, you grab that picture and show, uh, you know, send it over to me. I'd love to see it. I just got I just got some photos of a of a white deer and I actually when I got the photo I couldn't even see the other deer that were in the photo with it all I could my eye just went right to that white but um but Jay you've gotten some great um thanks and great comparisons and and we just appreciate you presenting for everybody today and um like Jay said if you enjoyed the webinar just check out the other things that we have to offer. I dropped in the scwf.org slash events for upcoming events that's in the chat. Um, and 
we will be sending a follow up email to everyone who registered with um, the link to this webinar recording on our YouTube channel. So thank you so much.